episode, Sunday the 29th of March 2020. And the uh, keen-eyed of you might have noticed that we're not in the church. Uh, this is the vicarage. Because of the latest restrictions with coronavirus, we are now uh, having our morning prayer here, as we're not allowed to go into the church building. But I hope that doesn't make this any less uh, an act of worship, and I do hope that you are able to, to take part in this. The difference today is you're going to hear some different voices, see some different faces. Members of the churches here at St Mary's Hale, but also in St Mary's in Westbank, uh, are contributing. And I hope this will become more and more as we go on uh, during these different times. And so you will see different faces, you'll hear different voices, uh, and I hope that just adds uh, to the flavour of this service. So let's just have a moment's quiet before we begin. And Will is going to lead us in our opening prayer. God of new life, God of risen hope, as we gather today, may we know your resurrection power in our lives. May our spirits be renewed. May our bodies be restored. Amen. It is always right as we read to worship that we also bring to mind the things we need to say sorry for. Maybe things that we've said or done that have hurt other people. Maybe our thoughts which actually have hurt God. And so let's take a moment just to think about the things <clears throat> that we need to be sorry for. And then we'll pray to God to ask him for his forgiveness. <clears throat> So we come to God from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for the, his forgiveness and his peace. After each line uh, of this prayer, the response is, forgive us and help us remember. Lord, we forget so easily. We forget your love that never gives up on us. Forgive us and help us remember. Lord, we forget your words and forget how you want us to act. Forgive us and help us remember. Lord, we forget those who love us and show us friendship. Forgive us and help us remember. Lord, we forget how you showed us to care for anyone who needs our friendship. Forgive us and help us remember. Lord, we forget that, the, that there are many people who need to hear about your love for them. Forgive us and help us remember. Thank you, Lord, that you forgive us and give us new strength to live for you. Amen. And now we're going to have our Bible readings. This morning's reading is taken from St Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning to read at verse 6. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. And so a person becomes an enemy of God when he is controlled by his human nature, but he does not obey God's law. And in fact, he cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. But you do not live as your human nature tells you. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you. In fact, God's Spirit lives in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you. Because you are being put right with God, even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of his Spirit in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
is from John 11, beginning at verse 32. This is telling us how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Then Mary, when she came where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jewish people who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jewish people said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he not, who have opened their eyes of the blind man, have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odour, for he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. I knew that thou hearest me always, but I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that thou didst send me. When he said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages, and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind them and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the great themes in John's Gospel is that of light. In John chapter 1, in fact in the first nine verses of chapter 1, the word light appears seven times. And John describes uh, the Word of God, the Word of course being Jesus coming into the world and bringing life. And he says that this life uh, is light or gives light to the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And when you follow then the Gospel of John, you see these images coming up time and again. That in the darkness of our world, the darkness of suffering, the darkness of death, uh, those dark places in our lives, Jesus comes as a light. And he transforms those dark places, he chases away the light, so he chases away the darkness. And so you find miracles performed, lives transformed and changed, people brought back to life. Light chasing away the darkness. It is one of my favourite images and if you've been to uh, some of my baptism services, so if you know me long enough by now, you know what I'm going to say next. My favourite piece of trivia uh, is the fact that in total darkness, in total blackness, according to science, if you lit a candle, you would be able to see that candle flame from 30 miles away. Now normally at that point, the people listening would go, wow! And I'm assuming that you've, you've done that now. Good. Light is such a powerful image, such a powerful symbol, and Jesus is the light of the world. And in John chapter 11, we see uh, this image of darkness and light again being played out. Jesus has come to Bethany, and he's come because his friend Lazarus has died. Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, are grieving. And it's four days since Lazarus was uh, died and buried in a tomb. And when Jesus comes, he finds that the village is still grieving, still mourning. It's a very different uh, picture to um, funerals in our culture, in our society. We very much keep our emotions in. We try to keep that stiff upper lip. We try to, to not let those things show. But in Jesus' day, and in many parts of our world today, it is a very different story. And here, four days on, 
it is still obvious that the grief is raw and hard and people are crying in the streets. And into this darkness of death, into this darkness of suffering and pain, Jesus comes as light. But he doesn't come as some superhero. He doesn't come with his cape flowing behind him, flying into Bethany, waving his hand, making everything right, and then flying away again with people saying, who, who was that mass man? Now Jesus is uh, much more profound, much more loving, much more caring. In the first verse that was read, verse 32, Mary comes to Jesus and says, if you'd have been here, Lord, my, my brother would have lived. She knows uh, the power of Jesus. She knows and has a hope in Jesus. And Jesus sees her weeping. He sees all the people around weeping. And in verse 35, that shortest verse in the Bible, it simply says, Jesus wept. The first thing that I'd want to say here is that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God in a way that we can understand. Jesus is God in the flesh. And so here is God, the creator of the universe, the one who made you and me, the one who made all of this, holds it all together and sustains it. And here he is, standing with fellow people, crying and weeping because of the loss of someone he loved. Never doubts that God, through his son Jesus Christ, knows what it means to grieve. Knows what it means to have that pain and that suffering of loss. And his first response is to come alongside, to place his arms around and to share in that suffering. We are never alone in our suffering. We are never alone in our pain. And God is always with us. And if you can picture Jesus coming alongside, standing with us, sharing those emotions, that is the first image that I want to put across. And then he says to, to Mary, where have you laid him? And Mary simply says, come and see. And so the, she, the scene shifts, they go to the side of the tomb. It's uh, carved out of a rock, there's a stone in front of it. And then people are looking at Jesus and the, the saying things, you know, he gave sight to the blind. So, so why could he not kept Lazarus from dying? If Jesus can do all these things, why is Lazarus dead? <clears throat> and maybe that's a question we often ask ourselves as well. The why? Why did this happen? Why couldn't it have happened another way? Why did God let it happen? And maybe Jesus can hear, maybe he can't. I, I probably think he can. But he simply asked for the stone to be rolled away. And imagine that stone being rolled away and there's darkness again. And this is the darkness of death. It's a cold, dark tomb. And within that tomb is the body of Lazarus. And again, into that darkness comes light. Jesus simply calls Lazarus to come out. And that darkness is transformed. And to everybody's amazement, Lazarus walks out. He's brought back to life. And just before he, uh, he prays that prayer, or he asked, sorry, he asked Lazarus to come out, he prays to God. He says, I thank you, Father, that you listen to me. I thank you that you, that you always listen. But I say this for the sake of the people here, so that they will believe that you sent me. Jesus always points people towards God. This light that is Jesus in the world points to this greater light that is God. This light that encompasses the whole world. And everything Jesus does is to point you and me towards God. To look beyond our current situation, to look beyond the, beyond the things that are right in front of us. And just to search out God. To know that he is with us and he is by us. And he shares in all that we go through. Lazarus rises from the dead and he walks out. Darkness is transformed into light. Death is transformed into life. This is the, uh, the, the biggest message, the biggest uh, theme of the Gospel of John. Transformation. Darkness into light. Death into life. 
Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. And as he, and when he got up to Jerusalem, of course, he would have then faced the trial himself. He would have died, but then he would have risen again. And that action of Jesus dying and rising has made it possible for you and for me to know salvation, to know forgiveness, to have life in its fullness, which is another famous verse from John's Gospel. Life in its fullness is a life where we know God is with us, where we know that through all our journey, all our hopes and our fears and our joys and our, our worries, that God is beside us, is with us, is within us. He shares all of those experiences. A fulfilled life is a life knowing God. But the biggest promise, of course, is that this fulfilled life is a life that doesn't end, that is eternal. And because Jesus made that journey to Jerusalem, because he made that sacrifice, we too can know resurrection. We too can know eternal life. Which means that this life is not all that there is. It means that death does not have the final word. Yes, Lazarus would have died again. And maybe there would have been prayers said for him at those times. But he would not have returned. And death still is in the world. And many of us still have those same questions, those same experiences, those same uh, ways of trying to communicate how we feel to God and to each other. But because of Jesus and because of his sacrifice, because of what he had to go through, we can know that death is not the end, that it does not have the final word, that there is life beyond, uh, life in the presence of God. And the fact that Jesus had to go to Jerusalem and the fact that he had to go through all that suffering shows again that he isn't some superhero who can click his fingers and everything is fine. The price he had to pay was an ultimate price. And the effects of that price are still rippling through history now. We still have death in our world. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't take much uh, imagination to know that, especially what is going on at this moment. Take heart, because in the darkness of this moment, Jesus still comes as light, and he can give you light and life in your heart now. All he asks you to do is to believe and trust in him, and you will know a fulfilled life, a life which doesn't end here, but continues for eternity. And we hold that hope for all those whom we love who are no longer with us. And we hold that hope for ourselves, as we continue our journey in this world. So let us now spend a brief time in prayer. You may want to bow your heads, you may want to put your hands together, you may want to close your eyes. So let's pray. Jesus came as a light to transform the darkness, to bring life out of death, to bring hope out of fear and doubt. And in that story of Lazarus, we have a foretaste of something far more wonderful to come, an echo of what is to come through Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you uh, for that story. We thank you that your son came, that he gave life and continues to give life this day, that his light disperses the darkness. And so we pray for the darkness in our world. We pray for the darkness of this coronavirus. We pray for all those people who are, are living very fearfully at this moment. Fearful of what this day will bring. Fearful of what tomorrow may bring. Fearful for their loved ones or for themselves. And Lord, into the darkness, we pray that your sun will come as light to give hope, to give peace, to give reassurance, to bring healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our government, our Prime Minister and his ministers, for all the work that they are doing at this time. We pray especially as the Prime Minister and other ministers are suffering with uh, COVID-19. We pray that they will still be able to uh, lead and to govern. 
We pray for all those people who make decisions that affect our everyday lives. Give them wisdom, give them courage and strength, and give them vision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord God, we pray for those whom we love, our loved ones, our family, our friends. We pray especially for those for whom we are separated from at this time. And Lord, as we face each day, help us to know that we are not alone and our loved ones are not alone, that you are very much in the midst. You are very present. And may your presence be known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray for those who are, are suffering uh, at this time. And into those dark places, we pray that your Son will come as a light. And so we do bring to mind those who need to know healing in their lives at this moment. And we bring to mind those who we know are grieving because they've lost someone they've loved. And in a moment's quiet, we name these people in our hearts to you. Lord God, in the darkness of suffering, we pray that you will come in your, with your light to bring healing and wholeness. And from the darkness of grief and bereavements, your light will shine in people's hearts and minds, that they will know your warmth, know your love, and know this promise that is eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And then we finish our time of prayer together by saying uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So now let us share the peace. We are the body of Christ, whether together in a building or in our separate homes. And through Christ's body upon the cross, we have been reconciled with God and with each other, and we can know God's peace. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's share it with each other, a sign of peace. Peace be with you. 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 May the peace of God be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. And you. And you. Sending everybody huge hugs. Peace be with you. Peace, Peace of the be Lord with be with you. Peace be with you. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, there were so many people who sent uh, footage of themselves sharing the peace. And uh, please do keep on doing that. And, uh, and as these weeks go on, you'll see different voices and different people taking part in the service. And hopefully we'll be a bit more adventurous and imaginative in what we do. Uh, but for now, I wish you a very good and peaceful week. I pray that as uh, you leave this place, that you do so knowing that the Lord Jesus leaves with you and that he walks with you. And I do pray that uh, as you continue your journeys, you will know more and more uh, the wonders of this light shining in the world. 
So I'll just leave you now uh, with Janice as she prays our final prayer. The Lord be with you. As we wait on you, Lord God, renew our strength, our hope and our vision to be your arms in this world, reaching out and enfolding with love all those we meet this week. Amen.